if anytime I hear someone open a sentence with you gotta have whatever, my first instinct is no, you don't. Oh yes. Oh God. Yes. Welcome back to, is it still good? This is the show where we take our rose colored glasses. We fly across the Atlantic solo. We break the record. We land in France. And the one we love did not come to greet us, so we take those glasses, we, we throw them in the plane, and we stomp off in embarrassment. And it's without the glasses that we must look upon all the culture of our youth and ask ourselves if any of it is still good. You're joining us. We're just two grown-up film students who hate growing up. No guests today. The guest is the love between the two hosts. I'm one of them. I'm Bear Kennedy in Chicago. And joining me with a mustache today. Yes, with a mustache. <clears throat> Andrew Carter in Los Angeles with a mustache. Um, it's a new thing. I don't think it's going to um, stick for too long. I also don't think I can do a mustache completely clean shaven, which is why there's some stubble. I think I would look weird. Uh, yeah, um, I agree. The stubble is good. In, yeah, it's good with that look. I, I think you're thank going you. down the right path there. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm not really a mustache guy, but it's like, you know, during quarantine, it's almost like, why not try these things? Yeah. Why not try out the old cookie duster? Is this, uh, is this, is this November adjacent? Is this a charity deal? Mm, you know what? It should be actually, because what is it if you grow your mustache and then at the end you don't, you shave it off and donate it? Uh, donate I, the hair? God, I, I wish I could just hear that sentence again. That is one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. No, I think <laughs> I gotta like I'm already sitting down. Like the idea that you could donate a mustache just just no no I just, just mean, ruined like the, my mind. <laughs> the hair <laughs> you donate the hair, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I don't know to like alopecia or something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What a way to start. One of us is no. an idiot. <laughs> I, I wish. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I have a mustache all the time. If I could just donate my entire mustache, uh, they'd have like a, like a wing built in my honor down at Northwestern Memorial for the alopecia ward. Um, no, I think what you do is you grow a mustache for... Movember as a way of showing, uh, I believe it's a, a prostate cancer initiative. I think you, oh, okay. you like either, uh, you know, try to raise some money uh, during the month and, and you grow the mustache as part of that. And at the end uh, you donate it. I don't think the money that is not the, <laughs> the mustache. How? Well, How? wait a minute. So you grow <laughs> that's, a mustache? That's Wait a minute, no, you grow a mustache and then you get money for it? I'm still confused. I, 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 think, I think what happened, I didn't expect to talk about this, so I didn't do any research. So I apologize to our listeners. <laughs> yeah, neither I, I, believe, I believe it started as like a joke, like you, you, like you have Movember, you, you grow the mustache in November. Mm -hmm. And I think from that joke, someone took it and made it into like a, a prostate, I'm pretty sure it's prostate cancer uh, mm -hmm. awareness initiative. I think it- Okay. Started, you know, funny mustaches are obviously hilarious and it eventually became, well, let's use mustaches and the growing thereof as a way to raise awareness for what I, I believe prostate cancer. And uh, I think, I think there's, I think there's a fundraising aspect to it as well. Mm -hmm. I believe that's the deal. Um, how did you think that a mustache got donated? Like do you, the hair, don't can't you? I feel I feel like I've heard of that people shaving whether yeah. it's their head or something, and they donate the hair. Well, we have a friend who who has done that. You can do locks of love with right. your hair, and you need right. you need like nine inches of hair. You need Ron Jeremy's dick length of hair. Yeah, you need a you need a lot of hair. But with a mustache, like you, where, what application would those hairs have to the donated? Yeah, I wasn't thinking. That's a good point. Because, yeah, you can't, cause you can't shave it and, like, peel, you know. Yeah, You'd have you to, like, just... wax it in one go so it kept right. its form. So, right, so it's all stay, stays together. Yeah, that I didn't work. mean to make fun of you. That just, I, that just, No, like, I don't really take it that way. I, I think it is, I think it's really funny. I didn't, I never I, thought about it like that. But, I mean, I, I still, I, again, I don't understand how growing a mustache is fundraising. I, like, 
I think the mustache is more symbolic. I think the, the fundraising is the, the real part. But I How is a mustache we, symbolic of solidarity with prostate cancer? Because it's something people were doing in November anyway. So why not use, you yeah. know, you, you want to you wanna have I mean, something that I people can I actually think see. what I said makes more sense. Well, I think you should tell off. people that you are, you are growing it to be donated. I think you yeah, should I'll just that. propagate that. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to donate this in a couple of weeks. I'll do that. Yeah. To, to hair research. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we are, we're in week two of our um, Thanksgiving sides uh, month. So actually, before we get into this week's side, Bear, have you used yeah. your cranberry sauce again? Um, I actually made it. Uh, I, I used all of what I, what I made last week. I just finished it off and then I made it again um wow. for a little little uh, small friend gathering um use basically the same recipe so did it again and uh i don't think i'll be able to make it for my my family thanksgiving assuming it's still going to happen mm. which is like my parents and stuff because my mom usually takes care of that but yeah i i executed it twice in one week wow did basically you use it mostly on turkey sandwiches turkey sandwiches yeah i mean it's uh jackie was using it just on toast um as just All like right. a jam which i thought was cool uh, but I was really enjoying little mayo, little cran turkey sandwich. Very good. Did you get through yours? We're still not through it yet. We probably won't get through all of it, but we used it last night on turkey burgers. Nice. And I homemade some pickles. So Sweet. literally just, I made a pickle brine, boiled it, and I poured it into some cut up cucumbers to make bread and butter pickles. Yeah. Really. Um, and it's what's called a quick pickle because the heat, uh, it can make it get, it can pickle the vegetables much faster. Um, and so I use those with, and I can't even believe we still had this, but at, at In-N-Out Burger, you can get extra spread and you can get those little spread packets. And oh, so yeah. we had kept some. And so we used that on the turkey burgers with the cranberry sauce and the pickles. It was great. This sounds wonderful. It was this really, really good, sounds good. <laughs> a really good turkey burger. Like it was just as, I swear that fucking spread, man. Which, by the way, it's just ketchup, mayonnaise, and relish. Like, you can that, make your yeah. own like that. I, I, and I've never even attempted to make my own. I, I love that shit. Uh, it's a great call to just have extra around the house. That's fantastic. That's really good work. It's a restaurant-quality turkey burger that we had. Brioche buns, like, forget Hell it. Oh, yeah. Did you have to, you have to refrigerate great. that spread, or is it cool kind of out? Yes. Out? No, you can. You should refrigerate it. That's what we yeah. did. Yeah. Because, it's. I mean, it's, it's, it's there's mayo in there. And ketchup, too. I mean, like, it all, it's all stuff that should be refrigerated. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I guess I the know, relish that, technically doesn't have to be refrigerated. But. And, well, may mayo actually doesn't until you open it. Um, that's true, too. Yeah, that's okay. true, too. Same with so, ketchup. I, sometimes um, it's... Yeah, so I didn't know, but... Uh, so but you know what, though? It's like, be, what I figure is that, like, what I figure is that in and out they like, they open up ketchup and mayonnaise to make this spread, and so it's resealed, but you still need to refrigerate it. Yeah. I, I get that. Do you make pickles often or is this a new endeavor? Somewhat of a new endeavor, but I've done it in the last month or so. I've done it like four times, maybe five. Sweet. I learned it from the chef show on Netflix. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's really fun. It's a really like easy thing and bread and butter pickles are great. Um, the brine is really intense Amazing. when you smell it, like right up to your nose. It's because like, the vinegar, it's, it's mostly vinegar. All right. So this week, dear listeners, we are tackling sweet potato casserole, um, which I remember, uh, as a kid, always seeing it there similar to my reaction to cranberry sauce. I never touched it because when I heard casserole, I was just turned off completely. I thought of like mayonnaise and tuna and tuna casserole. And I was like, what the, f so I, I honestly, as a kid, I thought sweet potato casserole is like, is a sweet potato and tuna fish or something gross like that? No fucking way. I'm not touching it. And it wasn't until much, much later that I learned sweet potato casserole was sweet potato and marshmallow and like kind of a dessert, but it still is looked at as a side dish. And it I, is. I've never understood that because it's so sweet. Yeah. Um, this was the first time I've ever made it. Um, I actually did what I like to think is a smart move. I made sweet potato casseroles for one. So I made little, made them in little ramekins because I knew if I follow a full recipe and make a full thing, I was like, this is never going to, this is going to be such a waste. <laughs> like there's no way 
that we're going to eat all these. So I just made one for me and one for Zoe and little ramekins. Cause I was like, well, there's a chance we might get through these. We probably will. Um, but yeah, my history with it is pretty limited. Again, I always remember seeing it, but I have some funny uh, stories uh, about a family member who likes to make it. But before we get into that bear, what's your, uh, yeah. what's your history with it? Well, I think you're correct in assuming that casserole implies something bad. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, even the word makes me cringe. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, for somebody who grew up in the Midwest, I didn't grow up with a lot of casseroles, or at least they, we didn't use that word. Mm. And uh, yeah, I, I just get like a ugh, like, ugh, fucking casserole. That's gonna be shit. As if I've gotten older, I, I've, I've been more um, inclined to enjoy casseroles. What are they? It's usually something that is in like a, like a eleven by nine dish like a glass mm -hmm. um deal and usually it's like it's kind of like what you described like layered stuff kind of cooked together in an oven and then uh served like like a cake you know like you take so it's pretty cake. similar to a trifle you know what it probably is it's probably a, a good a good here here's what i would think of like a good casserole would be lasagna like i would say lasagna is okay. technically a casserole but lasagna is fucking great yeah lasagna is awesome Amazing, but other things that kind of follow that same pattern and maybe less good also fall into that casserole mm -hmm. deal. Like I, when I was um, studying abroad in France, one of the things that the, you didn't have any say in what you ate, they just like made shit. And mm -hmm. one thing that they made was translated to like fish potatoes. And it was basically a casserole of potatoes and like some kind of cooked fish. And, uh, they had that like probably once every three weeks or so and everyone fucking hated it. Everyone just leave. And I would eat it just cause I, I have maybe low standards. I would eat the shit out of it. And the, the cooks who were very French and not friendly at all quickly warmed up to me when I was like the sole guy going to town on like a fucking tray of fish potatoes. Oh, I'm sure they loved you. Yeah. But by that time I was 19. So I was like, you know, a little out of my, casserole shell but to answer your your main question um this dish i've never made either this is easily my least favorite dish at thanksgiving i mine too straight up don't like it um my sister usually makes it i know she likes it i usually take like a little scoop to be polite i always regret it it makes me me too really thirsty like it's too sweet I agree. It's one of those weird, like we're eating it as a side, but it's clearly a dessert. And, and it's not fun. It's not. Like it, it, it's it, not. And, it doesn't, and it doesn't go with anything else on the plate. Very Literally much so, not no. yeah. anything else. And here's the thing. I don't like, in terms of the classic Thanksgiving sides, by the far, this is my least favorite. Yeah. Which is, is why we're doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it is. I mean, there's also some that I don't like, like I don't like carrots and turnips. I don't like, uh, like, on pearl onions or whatever the fuck love pearl onions love them. Ooh, not a fan i like love them. certain types of onions eh, similar to the tomato conversation certain onion i like onions more than tomatoes all True. around but but the texture sometimes like i really like grilled onions or maybe some caramelized onions but i don't know like a raw pearl, onions not really yeah, for me i could see oh, that right? yeah. pearl is like biting into an eyeball yeah, um, yeah, a little bit. I'm a big onion boy. I like them all, um, but I could definitely right. see if you have any kind of texture issue. A pearl onion, it, it's like it's like snapping into a testicle. Like it's it's yeah. a little weird, but I do not, like them. Yeah, not for me. Um, but yeah, I similar to you, I have a family member, a, a relative, um, who makes sweet potato casserole, and I always take a little bit to be polite. And not only. <laughs> uh, do this does this person make it every year they think it is the hit of the meal oh god like it's one of those things where after the meal they say you know um well everyone seemed to love it you know look, look how much is left there's not much left huh yeah, it was a big hit or whatever and it feels <laughs> like everyone else in the family is looking at each other like are they kidding are they, are they fucking nuts like <laughs> there's just there's no ch like, I don't know anyone who after the meal is saying... Still promoting it. Yeah, did you, did you try that sweet potato casserole? Make sure you get some of that. And it's always... <laughs> it's going fast. It's always that person, the one who, the person who made it saying, oh, make sure you try that. So it's almost, yeah. it's almost like they want it to feel like it's a word of mouth hit. 
but they're the <laughs> one that is just <laughs> spreading the word of mouth. This is this is very very similar to what I told you about veal guy or uh, venison people in the Midwest. Yeah, you know, like, oh, yeah. yeah, that venison is really good. It's like, dude, I like get off the gas. Yeah, like I know you made this. this yeah, and we you get brought it. it. Yeah, like it's Mike. It's in the it's like the Office episode when Michael Scott uh, wants people to know it's his birthday, and he brings in some donuts, and he's like, he's even more shameless because he's like, oh, someone brought in donuts for my birthday. And he brought them yeah. in. <laughs> exact same energy. Yeah, it is really. Um, but yeah, so um, I made mine this morning. Um, I'm about to reheat it. Bear, when did you make yours? I made mine last night. I was extremely high. Um, I, I, I documented. Was it challenging? Did it take longer? Or was, did you I do feel a like lot. it was pretty efficient? It, it was fine. It wasn't that bad. I tried to be efficient because I could see, um, reading the recipe, there was some stuff that I knew was going to, slow down the process like you gotta you gotta deal with kind of cooking the potatoes before you construct the casserole Mm -hmm. um so i kind of got that going and then made the topping uh i do a lot of baking when i'm stoned uh shout out to my stupid youtube channel bears baked baking with bear uh so this wasn't that hard baked baking with bear that's an incredible youtube channel title I, i i yeah i make a lot of stuff when i'm high and this was was very easy compared to some of the things that are more elaborate the the hardest thing when baking stoned is it's really easy to get lost in the recipe oh yeah oh oh, god but this was pretty straightforward yeah i don't cook stoned a lot what i like to do when i'm stoned is just like i don't know watch stuff or like write down i like to just like i like to smoke weed to relax and then if like if if an idea comes to me for like a, a movie or whatever i'll write it down but usually i just relax and like watch a movie like i got stoned and watch and rewatch drive this weekend yeah um which uh, that fucking movie rules and then i rewatched the founder with michael keaton i just watched that i remember you and i talking about it when it came out i i just watched it for the first time actually it's good performances i like that movie it is. it's solid yeah. it's it's a little too i feel like it could have had a little bit more bite oh, um absolutely and it, it feels a little toothless in places but i still enjoy it and the and he, <laughs> michael keaton is great so he's very good actually everyone's good at it. a little john, yeah, john carroll Carol lynch. Carol lynch love him and Dude, um, he's under fucking rated man I he's one of the guy. best ever i i, I always i see his name in the credits and i jackie gets mad at me she's like why are you yelling about john carroll lynch like he's in the credits he's gonna show up later i'm so excited Yeah, he's amazing yeah he's great but i that's a really good example of what i would say a, a, is a dad movie like yeah. That's a movie that you like your father watches because it's on TBS at like four on a Saturday. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah. then they tell you, oh, you see this movie, The Founder? <laughs> it's that. And the last one I saw in the theaters that was a real dad movie was uh, Ford v. Ferrari last year. Like, I saw that movie with dad my movie. dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like my dad and I went to see that. Everyone else stayed home, but my dad and I went and saw that movie. It's I really bad. that's a good movie too. It's not bad. It's it just you know, down the middle adult drama is like dad movie. It's better yeah. it's a it's a a full step above airplane movie. Um Yes, definitely. Because it because an airplane movie implies like I, I ha- I'm just gonna watch it because it's on. Like a dad movie, usually stuff to enjoy, but nothing too challenging. Right. Um, I mean I like both those movies are really good examples of dad movies. I yeah. actually think I might even prefer the founder to Ford versus Ferrari just because of the length. The founder goes down a little bit easier because it's, it, it's under two hours. Yeah. Whereas Ford versus Ferrari is, I think about two and a half. Yeah. Which, it's a little long. A and, little I, long. And, I, and I, and I, it's a real, it's based on a real event. So like I knew the guy fucking died. So, you know, right, you, at a right, certain point right. it's getting to like two hours. Like when are they going to kill him off? You know, it's funny. I actually didn't know that he died, but, um, but it's still like, I, I, I like when it happened, I wasn't like totally shocked. Yeah. But I didn't know that was coming because I didn't know the full story. Um, and it's funny. That's one of the, I feel like that might be the only movie. Um, no, maybe not the only one, but one of the few where Christian Bale actually uses his natural accent. Yeah. it And it actually kind of seems alarming because he gets so used to him doing. Yeah. Like, but no Bruce one, Wayne, like, a lot of people American. don't know that he's British and not only British, he's like, I he's, think he's actually from Wales or Welsh or whatever, but he's got a fucking like East London accent. Oh yeah, he's he's got some yeah. some weird speech. Oh yeah, he's like uh, you know, um, if we're gonna go up against Ford versus Ferrari, then like, I've got to go one, two, three. Yeah, I've got to drive the car, whatever. And you're like, what? 
can't believe I said like, no guests. I didn't realize I Christian Bale was going to be. On oh episode. yeah, I remember seeing an interview with Ben Affleck when he like he was he had just accepted the the role of Batman, and he said he was at like a costume shop, and he ran into Christian Bale there, and he said he was like looking for a costume with his kid, and over his shoulder he just hear hears like, "Oh, Ben, is that you?" And then he turns and he sees Christian Bale. The first thing he thought is like, Christian Bale's British. <laughs> I just had no idea. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. That's how good of an actor he is. Um, yeah. So what do you say? Should we heat these up and, and uh, try to yeah. stomach them? Let's do a little reheat. Yeah, we'll, All right, let's, reheat. Uh, get the mic we'll right down and be right back. All right, yeah. we'll be back in a second. All right. Let's hold ours. Let's hold them up. All right, I, I've got lots, lots of confessions to make on this. So... Well, yours is clearly prettier than mine. Um, I did put my spoon into it to just make sure it was, you know, heated through and everything. But here, here's what a, I made in a in a casserole pan. Oh, uh, that's a, yeah, I, that's a real big casserole. Yeah. So I will say, um, like, it doesn't look I, like there's marshmallows in there. Yeah, that's the thing. So I I do hate this dish. I really procrastinated making it and i almost just went to boston market and got it from there because i was like fuck i don't want to do this okay first of um, all they still have boston market open near you because i there's none around here yeah i got one within a mile um wow and i think boston market i think their genre of food could be described as thanksgiving oh yeah definitely just in general but i was i almost just did that because i just didn't want to commit to this and then i found I know we talked about the marshmallows and all that shit. And I found a recipe that's like, okay, this is not super sweet and there's no marshmallows. And I thought, all right, I'm just going to take a flyer on this. I've never had it without the marshmallows. Um, didn't mean to, to screw up the homogeneity of our, our dishes here. But yeah, this one, it's just got a uh, pecan brown sugar butter type topping. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but no, but no marshmallows. And I... I was looking at some research and trying to figure out like what the fuck on this dish. And one of the things I found was that the entire sweet potato casserole dish, it's actually theorized that it, it came about about a hundred years ago because mm -hmm. of the marshmallow lobby. Yeah. Like, I read like that, that too. Did you read that too? And I yep. was like, you know what? That suck. That sucks. That's bullshit. Yep. Like this, this dish is terrible. Um, like we accept this as part of Thanksgiving for some reason, even yeah. though because they were trying has, to get people to use marshmallows more, and they yeah. were like, "Oh, it's it's easier than than whipped cream or meringue, meringue. or something," which is which yeah. is correct because whipped cream and meringue or meringue is a real pain in the ass to me. That's a real motherfucker, yeah. But I don't even think of marshmallows as a substitute for those things. Like it blows my mind to think there was a time where the positioning of marshmallows on the market was, "Oh, this is this will save you so much time for when you're making that meringue." Right. It's like marshmallows, like a weird food yeah. that I sometimes eat in s'mores and maybe hot That's chocolate. It. That's it. S'mores, hot chocolate, and when it's in ice cream, I'm interested. Yeah, I, like I agree. You know, like Very if it's like, 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 like Ben and Jerry's fish food, or yes. I just tried this new flavor from Jenny's called Campfire Chocolate, which has marshmallows in it. It's like a smoked chocolate ice cream. Phenomenal. Some of the best ice cream that. ever. But Easy. like, yeah, I seldom do I ever, am I ever like, oh, can I get some marshmallows? It's like, who the fuck? They're just... They're not, they suck. They're chalky and dry as fuck, and they're really, yeah. like, not that good. But I do like, again, but I do like them in the things that we just mentioned. Yeah, those are all fine. But to have this whole dish come from the desire to sell more marshmallows in the early yeah, 1900s. It's outrageous. Uh, actually, yeah, it makes me physically angry. So I, I feel much yeah. better skipping them and trying to make okay. a dish that I would actually like. See, I I want I made sure to put them in because I had a it's funny like from I almost took the opposite approach to you because I was like if anything I'm probably going to like the marshmallows most in this okay. because I like again I like them in hot chocolate and ice cream and s'mores or whatever and they're the same kind of they're the same texture here toasted and gooey which is yeah. what I like in there so I'm like okay if there's going to be one good thing about it it's going to be the marshmallows but when I took them out of the oven it looked like Ghostbusters 3. Like, yeah. the Stay Puft Marshmallow had exploded again. It looked like mushrooms of marshmallows. Yeah. I'll post a picture of it, and you'll yeah, see what do, I'm talking about. They they tend to expand like that. Yeah, it's, it was nuts. I, I, well, because I hadn't ever, like, made this before or anything. I had no idea that that's what was going to happen. So I pulled them out of the oven and was just like, holy shit, this thing's about to fucking blow. Yeah. Um, and it's another funny thing. Before we dive in, 
on paper, you feel like this actually would get a lot of kids excited because yes. of the marshmallows. Absolutely. So it's interesting that we both as kids were like, no fucking thanks. I, I, no, I almost feel like it. if they changed the name from sweet potato casserole to like sweet potato marshmallows, you might have a bitter, bigger hit on your hands. But I feel like, and again, we're about to try this and see, but I feel like this is the worst Thanksgiving side dish that no one admits is the worst Thanksgiving side I, I dish. I think this could be excised from Thanksgiving immediately, and I don't yeah. know that anyone would give a shit. I agree. But let's, you know, let's yeah. find out for ourselves. Um, I, I really got into this last night. Like I said, I like, I completely agree with your theory of relaxing while you're stoned, but I like to bake because of the anticipation of eventually eating stuff. That's, a, that's very a good point. Um, and I did get point. into this when I was so, high last night in a big way. Did you use other, th like, it was, did you use, like, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, all that cinnamon. stuff? No, uh, no allspice. A um, little vanilla extract, a lot of brown sugar, butter. Yeah, yeah me too. Brown um, sugar, vanilla extract. And I, I'm okay with allspice, but sometimes you can get, if you go too nuts on it, it's all you taste, so... Um, yeah, I know. I tried to. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I do. It's 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 a strong spice. Uh huh. All right, here we go. Yeah, I I have way less of a problem with this than I have in the past. Yeah, it's not terrible, but but again, like imagining this on a plate with like turkey and mashed potatoes. it's i just this doesn't for me this just doesn't go with it this m tastes more like a pumpkin pie than anything mm -hmm. savory this this is much much closer to pie what i what i've made is could could rightly be considered pie mm -hmm. um which is fine i mean i i love pecans uh i, don't I was have gonna say i don't love pecans but i gotta say i do like the crunch mm-hmm Yeah, the kind of nutty mm -hmm. pecan brown sugar butter combo is is kind of gold to me. Mm -hmm. So I the mine came out significantly less sweet than I'm used to. Okay. Um, which which again I, I I did feel like I copped out. I really really uh, agonized about not having marshmallows in this or like you know am I am I cutting corners? But it, this is. I'm not immediately thirsty when I eat this. Um, I'm not yeah, like see, I am. Yeah, I'm not immediately blown out on sweetness. Uh, so I may have accidentally made something that I, I can tolerate. That's not an accident because it's like think about it. If this is your least favorite dish, you want you're going to try everything in your power to make sure that you like it. Mm -hmm. You know, probably at least, unless the the unless you're deliberately being like I want to throw up on the air, <laughs> which still haven't ruled out. Yeah, I haven't either, but I think I'm about to have probably one more bite and then I'm done. I just like it's too it's so sweet. It's just it's too much. And when I've gotten it from Boston Market, um, when I've like gone through phases of life where I've tried to convince myself that I like it. And I'm done. Um, I was like five bites, I'm done. Yeah, that that's fair. When they scoop that shit at Boston Market, they always scoop it in the way that like they never get the marshmallow. Like they're always giving you the fucking sweet potato. So they always mm -hmm. scoop it on an angle. And that always bothered me. Um, yeah. Even though I didn't, uh, you know, eventually I just was real with myself. I was like this fucking dish sucks. But I felt like yeah. they were always specifically not giving me the topping that I wanted and just give me the bottom of that stuff with the way they played it. Yeah. I mean, that's the point. Maybe their manager's grabbing them by the collar be like, don't sell too many marshmallows. <laughs> you know, we don't get those in bulk like we used to. Give them the good stuff. Yeah. You know, what's so weird to me too, is that like, if someone were to try that, like a kid tries that and that's their first time having sweet potato, that's what mm -hmm. they think sweet potato tastes like. And sweet potato is great, but that is full of like cinnamon, sugar, um, allspice, ginger, vanilla extract. That is not what sweet potato actually tastes like. Yeah. You just like, I barely get it. sweet potato in there. I taste yeah. like crunchy pecan, cinnamon allspice mixture whatever the fuck and then some marshmallow yeah i agree Anything i mean sweet potato, sweet potato there is to kind of like keep it all together mm -hmm. i mean in, in mine specifically i feel like the sweet potato is a vehicle for the, the topic Ugh. um a vehicle for what 
for the topping. Yeah. I like it, it really, there is not that much flavor that's coming from the bottom layer of sweet potato. It's, it's mostly on my pecan topping. And like I said, yeah. the texture is fine. It's definitely soft. It's a little, little baby foody, um, you know, yeah. like living in the nursing home. But uh, I, I don't hate this. I, I thought I was going to make this. I, 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 I should have done what you did. I couldn't find something with the proportions were what I felt good about. This was like, well, you know, two pounds. I was like, dude, I don't even want to make one right. pound of this bullshit. See, um, I found, I, that didn't occur to me till this morning. But last night when I was like preparing everything to make in the morning, I was like, fuck, all right, I guess. And then I woke up and I was like, I wonder if they have like, like a small portion. And I can't remember what I Googled. I think I might've Googled like mini sweet potato casserole or something. And then this recipe came up that was sweet potato casserole for one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, perfect. And then it said it used ramekins. And I was like, thank, and I, I remember getting those like less than a year ago to make chocolate lava cake. We had no other reason for ramekins ever. And then I got them for chocolate lava cake and we just kept them. And thank fucking God I did because other, uh, we wouldn't have been able to make it otherwise. I would have had to I, yeah. do what you did and I would have been fucking unhappy about it. I think ramekins are like a textbook wedding registry gift too. Yeah, see, um, I, we didn't even get them for our wedding. We got, I went to Gelson's because we wanted to make chocolate you, lava cakes. So you went on a, a ramekin mission. I literally went to Gelson's to get ramekins. I don't think I got anything else. Maybe some stuff for lava cake that we didn't have yet, but. That's awesome. It was just these ramekins. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, no, I did not enjoy that at all. That's definitely a, a hard no for me. It's <laughs> definitely not still good. And I don't know if it ever fucking was. Um, it's too sweet. It doesn't know what it is. It's definitely a dessert, and that you, yet you call it a side. Um, it's too strong of it is flavors. Way strong. It's yes. way too strong. Um, I don't know how you can eat a lot of that and not feel sick or at the very least pre-diabetic yeah. at the end of it. It's just, no. it's not, I don't know. I don't get it. I, it's funny, man. In my research, I found it's like, you know, sweet potato casserole. What a classic. It's a Thanksgiving classic. But I even read on uh, a little piece about the origin of it. It was like sweet potato mm -hmm. casserole is a Thanksgiving classic. And yet every time I eat it, I can't help but think how bad it is. And I was like, this is like, it's like the worst kept secret. Everybody knows this, this sucks. Absolutely. So why does it still make appearances? And I why do we have family members that are like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's like fun to make. I will say, I, I personally like cooking and baking. I enjoyed making it. I thought it was fine. I wasn't like, you know, considering that I had a pretty good feeling that I wasn't going to like it. I wasn't like, oh, come on. Like I was, you know, it was a nice experience baking it, but yeah, I don't know. I think you're right. I think, and we touched on it a little bit last week, but I think it's very easy, especially in the United States to like put a lot of stock in stuff that's like, oh, it's a tradition right. or like, oh, we always have this. And then you actually look at the history. It's like, you don't have to go back too many generations to find that that's not anywhere near the fucking case. I think we're Dude, way ridiculous. too, too, you know, eager to make things part of a, a long standing tradition. And especially when it doesn't really come out of somewhere organic. Like if this is really from the marshmallow lobby, like who gives a shit about this dish? Fuck it. it tastes like hell. Yeah, it's, um, like the, it's, it's, it's the, it's the hallmark card of Thanksgiving sides. Yeah. In terms yeah, we of don't need, people just like need. forcing it down your throat. I, I think you're onto something. I, I think it, it survives because there is like one person who likes it. Um, or, I would probably agree with that. There's, there's at every Thanksgiving meal, like maybe it, let's call it like, 10 to 20 people, there's one to two people who really like it. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff I read was about how it is a, a divisive side dish. Like, oh, people either it love is. it or hate it. And I'm like, I think more people hate it. I think everyone kind of accepts that it's going to be there. And it's driven by those one or two people that are like, oh, we got to have the sweet potato casserole. And my thing is always like, if anytime I hear someone open a sentence with you got to have whatever, my first instinct <laughs> is, no, you don't. Like, you can make your life better. <laughs> Uh, no, you don't I don't have to accept this shit. Yeah, you you don't just blanketly <laughs> accept shit. Like, just don't do it. Like, you, don't you know what else is a fun theory to think about is the person who makes this and then walks around saying you gotta have it. Maybe they yeah. hate it. 
Maybe they're just like, all right, I made this to just, make my contribution. Yeah. And I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. I'm going to go to McDonald's and get some French fries. Like, I'm I, out. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I think this, this probably isn't the easiest dish to make, though it is easy. I think you could, if you're really looking to do a it was cop not that out hard of, to like, make. That's true. If you're, if you got the lazy uncle who's like, oh, I got to make the easiest shit, I think the green beans is probably easier. Um, you know what's hilarious? One of my uncles makes the green beans. Oh, there you go. I, <laughs> <laughs> called it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, you know what? Green beans almond dean is maybe my favorite side dish. I have no um, problem with that. I, I, I love I, green beans yeah. almond dean. I, I love green beans in general, but I think this is definitely in the running of like easiest thing uh, to bring that would be homemade. Because I mean, you could just like buy a It pie. is easy, but it, there is a process to it. I mean, you have to, at least this is what I did is like I boil, boiled the potatoes for like 20, 25 minutes, made sure they were soft, mm-hmm. smashed them. Um, and while I, while they were boiling, I mixed together, um, the brown sugar, allspice, cinnamon, um, ginger, uh, a little salt, and then the egg and made it all together, Mm -hmm. mashed the potatoes, put the batter in there with them, mixed them around, topped them with pecans. You have to measure it out a little bit. It's like, it definitely is like, it's easy. Yes. But like, but it's not something like green beans, almond Dean is the literally you buy sliced almonds uh and green beans and you put them in a pan with a little butter and oil and you're good and it is like the easiest fucking thing ever i I, this would be not bad like there are a lot of steps for this and i right i baked my potatoes for an hour so you have to deal with like baking or boiling the time is big thing there uh but this wouldn't be a bad dish if you had like a 10 year old who wanted to be involved like oh can i make something you're like all right here right I'll supervise you. Even the name, this. again, we go back to the name, Sweet Potato Casserole. Even sounds that like sounds, shit. It not only does it sound like it, but it sounds retro. It does. Like, it, 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 it sounds, like, I know we're talking about the culture of our youth, but I think we're also just talking about the culture of youth on this show, and it's, it sounds like something from the 60s. That absolutely. Just, absolutely. That definitely just, or maybe even the 50s, it sounds like something from the 50s and 60s that just persevered, that just yeah. kept going through all these things. And even in my research, I found that the first mention of it was in like a 1918 um, like article, like sweet potato recipes or whatever. And there was some like casual racism in it. And I saw that talk- same article. Did you see yes. that thing? Yeah, about yes. like tater- taters and possums. And it literally uh-huh. compared uh, a black person to a possum. And I was just like, this yeah. is disgusting. Like, this is absurd. It, it's amazing how casual stuff like that used it's, to be. It's it's ridiculous how casual yeah. it is. It was like, and I wrote in the article, the person was like, let's digress for a second. Like how, like how casual it used to be that it was used for a laugh. Like, oh, <laughs> let's keep going yeah. with the recipe. Like that's horrible. Yeah, disgusting. yeah. Quick, quick editorial about, about uh, hating black people and we'll get right back to the cast. Yeah, and we'll get right back yeah. to the recipe. It's, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Um, so yeah, that's another thing that I think when it's like, you know, that just made me hate the dish even more. Yeah. Now, like reading that, I was like, oh, good. Yeah, this is, you know, th- th- this is rooted in some evil as it fucking should be. Well, I think um, I remember reading yeah. about cranberry sauce too, that it came to into the public sphere around the same time. I, I, I think yeah. it was like early 1900s. So I think, you know, by that point, most of the West was kind of settled, like the country had kind of congealed into what it is now. Right. And, that was also kind of the dawn of radio and mass information and like, you know, mail order catalogs and and stuff like that. So I think that the, as unique as some traditions maybe were for Thanksgiving, right around that time was the time when things started to propagate out to different parts Mm -hmm. of our our country and and start to think, you know, things were spread around like, Oh, um, you know, Oh, here's, here's what a Thanksgiving would entail. And then you, you would see that in a magazine or something and think, oh, I, I got to make the sweet potato casserole, even if that right. wasn't a thing. And then, right. um, you know, you do it a couple of times and all of a sudden it's always there. Uh, but yeah. I agree. I get strong 60s vibes from this from, for some reason. Um, yeah. Like just weird housewife. Um, yeah, you man. Know. And honestly, this just, comp- this just once again, for me, perpetuates the fact that I think tradition can really be overrated. I think it's totally overrated. And it's I, I, so yeah. antiquated and it's forced and it's like, you know, especially with the whole fucking casual racism thing. It's like, you know, I mean, even Thanksgiving in general, 
you know, like, like people, like, is it, is it an, it is an extremely problematic holiday. And, oh my god you know yeah. like and like the you know fucking people that like you know chris christopher columbus has become like voldemort like we don't say his name yeah and that's really taken a turn in the last uh, 15 years or so well i mean as it should when you yeah, really absolutely. learn about the history <laughs> and like when you're you know it's like it yeah. makes me taking a turn is truth in this case yeah and it's just bizarre to me but like you know i understand tradition in terms of like the things that give us comfort around this time of year and especially right now in 2020 like we need comfort this time of year because it is just it is a dumpster fire Absolutely. um however um this dish will not be making an appearance at our thanksgiving table um dear god no um it's a hard no for me um even the fucking bad history notwithstanding i just don't like the way it tastes i'm just yeah, like it's not either you know um but i will say i enjoyed um giving it a shot i enjoyed really like learning and 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 being like okay like let's see if i actually hate this as much as i remembered and not only that i think i hate it more than i than i remember i feel like even just now these five or six bites whatever i had that might be the most bites i've ever taken of this dish this is by far the most I've had, but like I said, I, I accidentally kind of made something that is uh, tolerable, if not good, but I, I completely agree. Right. I mean, sweet potato casserole is not good at all. It's, it, it, I think everyone should feel empowered to not only not have it as part of Thanksgiving, but just like, just be in control of your life. You don't have to bow down to this out. stuff. Like no one's keeping score. If you don't like something, just get rid of it. Like who cares? Yeah. Uh, next time that family member the elders right the next time that family member or relative tells you like hey you got to try this say i don't got to do shit no this is and i don't got to try that yeah because any you're right anybody that says that it's like they're trying to pawn it off on i don't know it's 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 the whole classic thing of like people don't like being told what to do and so when you tell them oh you got to do this it comes across like you have to do this and i'm telling you and it just immediately brings up this feeling of like i don't know get the fuck away from me I agree. I, you know, I grew up Catholic and I, I've never met another Catholic who, who didn't hate church um, <laughs> and didn't, didn't hate like every part of it. Like, oh, fuck, I gotta fucking go to church today. Um, and yet everyone does it. It's just like, oh, well, you know, we hate it, but we have to do it. Um, right. I'm not a fan of living life that way. I think that's stupid. Um, you know, but, who's not a fan of living life that, like that? And I must give her credit for it is my wife. She nice. is not someone who does what people feel like like even and i'm sometimes guilty of being like oh man you so you got to see this movie or whatever like i gotta you know and she's just like yeah you know like i'll 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 do what i damn well please and i remember there was one time years ago when she was i forget how like if she was like sick with like a migraine or something but she was in this is before we lived together and this was in uh, she was in her apartment and she was lying in bed and we were in we were having an argument about something and i think it was related to like you know like you you know like i think i was trying to tell her like you know get up and and you'll feel better or something like that and i said something along the lines of well you can't just lay in bed all day and she said i can actually do whatever i want (laughs) and and I just and like that moment it's so funny you'd think that that would have been like oh my god but that totally broke the tension and I started cracking up and then she did too and then we were both like all right I love you see you later or something (laughs) because it's like what do you say you're like you know and and you know what it is she she's British so it's not only there's a little bit different of a I don't know there's a different way that they do things over there and same in in canada it's, so she's british and canadian it's like not only is it more secular in terms of like church and stuff she never went to church or anything but i think it was a little bit more lackadaisical when it came to like you know routines and stuff like that like i don't know if if zoe ever zoe did you ever do chores never did chores like in america like that's like like that you learn how to do chores when you learn how to walk that yeah like, that's a good point it's it's just different and i mean look her work ethic sucks no i'm kidding it's <laughs> <laughs> because of the chores no yeah. um but yeah i just that's I, I think and that's what's made our house such a like in my opinion such a like liberal loving 
open door policy thing because we don't really have these like we have things that we like to do and stuff. I mean, more so me than Zoe in terms of tradition, but tradition in general, I think we try and like, just, we try and create our own and we try yeah. and just like keep things fresh. Like this year, we're going to be here in California for Thanksgiving and Christmas for the first time, just the two of us and, and our dog. And it's like, let's just watch Christmas movies that we like and make a gingerbread. Like, we'll just do some stuff that we like to do that we don't necessarily do every year. Yeah. Just have some fun with it. Yeah, I'm I'm always trying to break that. I think um I you know, you grow up in a society where you feel obligated to do certain things and it takes a long time to to realize like I'm not going to fucking do this. It sucks. I don't like it. And uh I've gotten away yeah. from a lot of that, but even, you know, Christmas especially like I have this fucking Christmas tree that I put up and it takes forever and I hate it and I always put it up and Jackie's like why? It's like, I, she's a Jew. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, it's Christmas and you put up a fucking tree. She's like, have you thought about not doing it? Yeah, she's like, says um, no. Yeah, and like I, like I said, I've gotten away from a lot of stuff, including religion, um, you know, in life that I, I grew up with that it was like, you know, super obligation, have to do it even though it sucks. You know it sucks. Everyone around you knows it sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there, I don't know. It's really tough to break the spell of some of this stuff, even when you straight up don't like it. Right. Uh, I wish I wish I was. And look, about some it. people do like it, and that's totally fine. Like, f- for those of you that like it, keep doing it. More power to you. But for those that don't like it but continue to do it, that's I think who we're talking to here. Yeah, because it's and like it, you don't have to, especially if you're I, an adult. I've brought up the, the my favorite Edward Furlong line reading in Terminator Two when he says, "There's no fave what we make for ourselves," <laughs> um, which is, I, I know it's a drop in the bucket of bad Eddie Furlong line readings, but that one. My God, I just remember him on the motorcycle going, "Okay, hold on." Yeah, it's like <laughs> like his energy on screen doesn't match the cadence of what he's saying, and I'm like, they must have ADR'd this kid's whole performance. Oh, they should have. It's crazy. Just had had a full grown adult come over and loop it. That's amazing. uh, Yet again, T2 strikes. But yeah, this is terrible. It's bad. It's not still good. And uh, definitely uh, not still good. I may continue to eat this because I'm a degenerate, but. uh, Because you like fuel. mm -hmm, Um, But I I don't need this. My Khalil wrote a line in a script recently that was like, what did he say? It was, um, he was like, you don't go to McDonald's when you're in the mood for a burger. You go to McDonald's when you're in the mood for McDonald's. Yep. And I feel like that's a good line in general, but it's a good line for something like this. It's like, you don't eat this when you're in the mood for like sweet potatoes or whatever. It's like, you eat this for fuel. Like yep. when you're in the mood for like, whatever the fuck this is. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's a good note to end on. Um, this was a fun one. Uh, we have one more week of Thanksgiving sides and we will see you next week, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So hopefully we'll all, oh, we all have safe travels and or maybe if we're not traveling just stay at home be safe yeah, just be COVID safe cases are definitely rising it's yeah definitely scary hunker down and uh check us out stillgoodshow.com uh instagram at stillgoodshow i will be posting that picture there um of the the big giant marshmallow mushrooms um you can also find us um on email excuse me you can also find us uh still good show at gmail.com if you want to send us an email and please give us a five-star rating on um apple podcasts itunes podcasts because yep. we are a download-based show for sure um yeah say something mean about us but give us five stars yeah say whatever you want horrible thing but definitely give us five stars we would really appreciate it and we will see you next time Thank you so much.